Trading Night, episode 144. Don't try to double, triple, do all those massive numbers, but instead make sure that at the end of each and every month, you've still got your account. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than... I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up traders, welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host Cam Hawkins and today we've got Laseba Matupi on the show. Now Laseba is a trader from South Africa who uh, has got a story which pretty much resembles an action movie. He's got guns, shootouts, uh, we've got drugs in there, we've got skateboards and of course we have trading. So you're going to find out Laseba's story in a second and how he went from living in a garage to trading for a living so guys that's coming up now do remember things coming up here in trading up we've got the genius trader so stay tuned for that uh, also if you haven't been following along i released the freak bot just earlier this month in fact the beginning of the month it's available for the month of october only it's part of my robot lab which is part of my robot builders club so if you do join my robot builders club this month you will get access to that and it's the only month that's going to be available uh What's done so so far? We've run it for a week, and currently it's made one percent return, risking one percent per trade, with a peak drawdown of 05 percent. So it's actually doing all right. The first week's been pretty good. So if you want to check those results out, there are links below the video. We're going to be running that for the rest of the month. So guys, if you do want to get hold of that, remember join the Robot Builders Club. I'm still taking on members. The doors will be closing soon. This is your only chance to get this particular bot. Only going to be available in October. Check out the video I did about it as well if you want to find out more about how it works and how you could potentially uh, improve it and see the results as well. And we did shoot a video after the show, so if you do want to find out how Laceba trades the US 30 and I think oil as well, you want to jump over there to the YouTube channel, check out the video, and you're going to see him break down a price chart. All right, guys, let's get on with it. Hey, folks, my sponsors, City Traders Imperium, have just launched some amazing changes to their funded trader program you got to check out. You can now skip the whole evaluation, trade gold as well as Forex, plus they've increased the drawdown you're allowed in both the evaluation and when funded. With C2A, it's even faster and easier to reach up to $4 million in funding with a 50 to 70% profit share. Click the link in the description to find out what else has changed. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Laseba Matupi here on the show all the way over there in Johannesburg, South Africa. Welcome to Trading Up, Laseba. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks. I appreciate being here. Like, you know, being here, I always watch this channel, like, in terms of, like, other traders' interviews and stuff. So me being here, like, it, it means a lot. So I appreciate being here. Well, I was going to get some other traders on from South Africa, and then uh, my past guest, Joe Ash, was like, no, 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 this guy the, this guy, and another guy who we're also going to get on are the business, so get them on, get them interviewed. So that's why you're here. Um, so I can't wait to hear the story. Now, um, tell us about what happened to you just the other week, because I saw something crazy on your Instagram. We'll start off with that, and then we'll dive into your trading career. Yeah. What, what happened over there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what actually happened was like, you know, um, even like it, it's been like, you know, a traumatic a few days, like a few days from now, it's been a bit more traumatic. But what happened is that like, you know, I was just here at home, normal day, chilled and stuff, because I'm always in the house. I'm always like in the house, just chilling and stuff, trading, obviously. But on that day, I decided to just go to the hood. Like there's a section of by like, it's where I come from, you know, like home and stuff. I went to go check up on my brother. Like I was actually craving food and I'm, I got bored of like ordering like a lot of like, you know, takeaways and stuff. So I wanted to get like home cooked food. And then like, you know, I took a drive later on in the evening. Normally I'm always with my protective guard whenever I goes out, whenever I go out. But that day, like, you know, I just decided that I want to be alone. You know, I just wanted to clear my mind off things and stuff. So yeah, I contacted him and then I told him, okay, I'm going out one, two, three, I understood. And then on my way there, I didn't notice that a car followed me or anything. Like, I didn't see anything at all. But as soon as when I got there, um, at home in the hood, uh, what happened is that, like, you know, a car came behind me, and then he just stopped in front of me. There were, like, four guys that came out with guns, all of them. They were fully armed. And then, you know, they just approached me. They went straight to the driver's seat, and they went straight to the passenger seat. My brother my brother was on the passenger seat. And then, you know, they just started, like, you know, I'm wanting the car keys because I had the car keys on me. 
And I didn't know that I had the car keys on me. So they took long, like that whole crime scene took a bit longer than usual. Cause like, you know, they were looking for them though, you know, battling going forth, back and forth and stuff. And then eventually, like after a few more seconds, they found the, they, they shot first cause my brother ran to the opposite direction. So they tried shooting at him and luckily they missed fortunately, but um, I saw that, okay, no, this is serious. Like, you know, this is serious, like shots and stuff. Then I just gave up and they took the keys from me and off they drove just like that. Yeah, because I saw your picture on your uh, Instagram profile yeah, and I was like, what on earth has gone on here? I thought it was like Halloween or something. You had blood all over your face and everything. Yeah. So it, it, horrific to hear uh, that. Yeah, I nearly even forgot the fact that, like, you know, I got beaten up and, like, I was left, like, close to half dead, like, on the pavement because, like, they, they were just kicking me, beating me and doing all those things. Like, yeah, that was, like, you know, it was painful. Well, damn. Well, look, um, yeah. we, we're gonna we're gonna um, move on into the show here and find out about you as a trader, and uh, okay. and I can see the chart there behind you. So, guys, if you're listening to the podcast, you want to check out what uh, what's going on here, then head over to the YouTube channel to watch this. Now, to start off with, how did you get into trading? How did I get into trading? So, um, so um, should I speak about my journey from like you know the early years or yeah, from the like, early years? I, we'll yeah, dive in. The, we'll years. dive in there as well and and find out okay. a few other things. Yeah. Okay, no problem, no problem. Let me just speak about my journey from the early years. So I think from the age of grade eight, which is like 16, is it 16 or no, not 16, 13, 13 years old, somewhere around, yeah, 13, 14 years old, um, I actually got into business. Now. So I got introduced by into business by one of my closest friends at the time. And then like, you just saw my mindset and how I'm, 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 I'm targeted with people, how I like, like, you know, to engage and do all those things with people. Then just told me, it's like, how about we start selling like sweets and stuff? I was like, sweets, is it possible of us to sell and make money off of that, you know? And he's like, yeah, I know, let's try it. And yeah, we got into selling sweets, the business of selling sweets and chips, very low, very low um, profits that we used to make on a daily basis. But that automatically opened up my mind into seeing that there's a way that you can make money off of like, you know, working a job or doing anything. Because the fact that like, you know, I had um the the the, the products on me and then someone would just come in and give me money and then I give them something and then I make a profit off of that. I like that whole concept, you understand? So I got into business um at that age, like 13, around 13 years old. And then Two years later, because we've been doing the same business model, two years later, I lost my best friend. Like, he's been a very good friend of mine, best friend, and he taught me a lot of things, you know. I lost him, and that was, like, you know, a very painful moment for me. So what i done is that, I um, mean, instead of me going through, like, you know, pre- depressive moods and all those things, I decided that I'm going to stick, I'm going to learn skateboarding and then I'm going to stick to learning skateboarding because I liked the fact that like, you know, with skateboarding, there's like, you know, discipline, you, you, it teaches you discipline, you know, and it's an alone spot. Like, you know, you don't need like a team to, to, to nail down those tricks and stuff. You understand? So yeah, I got into skateboarding and then I started selling, but skateboarding is also a bit more expensive because you need like parts, you need all these things, shoes, you're always messing up your skate shoes and stuff. So I had to come up with a way of how am I going to make money in order to just continue um, skating. So I got into the business of selling skate parts. So in order of me to be able to move forward and like, you know, be able to just generate money and still continue to skill, um, fund my passion, I just had to do what to just sell some parts, like, you know, maybe a pair of wheels or maybe trucks or maybe the deck or anything, something like that. And with that, it helped me be able to still continue to skate continuously and continue to sell. Just by doing that, I think I got into business because I didn't see it as business. I just saw it, saw it as I need money to fund my passion. But just doing that, like, you know, I got into business. And from there, like, you know, I I moved to certain things that, like, even now I wouldn't say I'm too proud to speak of. Like, around grade 11, when I was 16, 17 years old, I got involved into, like, you know, illegal activities. Let me put it that way, you know, because, like, um. I, like I, I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of knowledge towards like, you know, what it is that I can make or what businesses I can get into. Like, you know, my mind was still a bit more limited into that. So the only thing that I knew at that time would be like, you know, Ill- illegal stuff, you know. So I got into that for like maybe a year, but nothing too hectic. I think I was selling just mar- marijuana at that time. And even though it's, you know, it wasn't allowed and stuff, but, you know, I got, I got involved with that. And then, like, you know, I pushed it for over a year, but I noticed that it's too risky because, like, you know, at times I had to be scared of the cops, you know, all those things. Like, it was just too risky for me. For me, like, that whole business model was was a bit too risky, but... <laughs> just a but bit. I, I love, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but I love the fact that, like, you know, I was able to just see myself making, like, you know, that money, like, daily money coming into um, my pocket. So it allowed me to also have a belief of 
it means that I can make as much as possible in a day, no matter like, you know, whatever business I'm in, I just have to pick the right way and a legit way. So, you know, since then, like, you know, I've been going forward and back trying different um, businesses. Like, you know, I went into network marketing, but, you know, it, it was tough because, like, I didn't know anyone at the time. So I needed, like, obviously, like, you're paying subscription and stuff. And I needed, like, you know, to, 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 to have people that are under me in order of me to make money. And I didn't know anyone at the time. And, like, I think it was, like, great. Uh, not great. Um, I was 18, 18 at this time. Yeah, 18, just after high school. I just got uh, um out of high school. So I'm trying to figure myself out, you know, but still trying to figure myself out. I got back in the streets and then I got back into illegal activities and all those things. So it was a bit tough for me. Like, you know, that old journey was tough because there was a time whereby I got depressed. There was a time whereby, like, you know, I, I lived a level by I'm not proud of. But only, like, you know, when I jumped into 19 was when I came across Forex trading. And how I came across it was... It's, it's 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 like even now when I think of it, it's it's like it makes me be excited because my friend's mom has been trading and she wasn't like you know making a lot of money or she wasn't. But like you know, one day I was just chill. I was I was waiting for my friend at the door, and then she's like, "Hey, see what I'm doing?" I was like, "What is that?" You know, she was looking at charts. Then she explained, "No, this is trading," and I was like, "How does it work? This looks interesting." Then she started explaining to me, "No, it's all about like you um." The market it goes up like she explained it in a way whereby she also didn't understand it perfectly but for me it was like i want that you understand because after she told me that she told me that she's able to make money being at home and she's able to just pay off her bills such as like rent she had car um car bills and stuff i was like just by being at home you are able to i see my mom every morning going to work and stuff and you just being at home you are able to pay off your bills i think that's like you know um a very great business model even though if, if, like the fact that it's even legit and stuff I like that, you know, and speaking about me seeing my mom go to work every morning, um, I forgot to also mention the part that, like, you know, when I was 13 years old, one of the main reasons that actually forced me, not even forced me, that pushed me to get into business with this close friend of mine was the fact that at the time we were living in a garage, you know, me, my mom, my sister, and my younger brother, we used to live in a garage, so in a garage, not even a double garage, like a one square garage, and then in the middle would put like a curtain, so that curtain would separate. Like this side here would be the 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 um the the room would say the room, and then this side here would just be like you know our living room type of thing. So yeah, like just that, like you know, I I think from that point, I didn't go, I didn't have a mindset of no, we are poor, we are we are, we are, we are do, I didn't see it in a negative way. I just saw it in a way of my mom is doing whatever that she can to just make sure that you know we are alright and we've got the roof on top of us. How about I also man up and as young as I am, I do something that's going to be able to bring money home and I can, you know, I can help out here and there so she can breathe, you know. So that's one of the things that actually forced me to, like, to to to, to push more. I think that's one of my strongest why till this day. And I even remember, like, at that time, she used to pay a lot of money on my transport fees. I'm going to school and stuff. And then I proposed to her and I was like, you know, instead of you paying all that money and you know me going to school how about you just buy me a bicycle it's a once-off <laughs> it's a once <laughs> it's a once -off. and i wanted a freestyle at that point you know a bmx bike so i was like it's a once-off purchase and then all these years moving forward i'm going to be using that so how about instead of you every month taking out money you take it out once and then it saves us both you know so that's how i've always been with things and yeah so 20 2017 2017 like um this friend's um this friend's mother told me about forex maybe around 2016 but i didn't go too much into into detail with it i thought maybe you needed like you know a lot of money you needed like you know um you know a lot of things i, I just thought like you know investing is like complicated you just have to be someone or do something to invest you know that's how i saw it but luckily during that time I just, you know, went on YouTube because I, I they, they, even where I used to stay, um, they, they were, where I even recently got mugged, um, the, 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 where the hijacking happened, that's where, you know, I used to say. So what they've done is that at the park, they put like, you know, this public Wi-Fi, so they would give us like 500 megabytes a day. Every morning I would wake up, go to the public Wi-Fi spot, and then I would just watch as many YouTube videos as possible, like three, four, five videos, and then the Wi-Fi data would be out, and then I will just have to plan for the next day on what it is that I'm going to watch. <laughs> you know? So so that's what I've done for, like, I would say maybe five months, you know, just by watching videos, you know. I went into communities, like, there's different types. I just joined everything that I could find on Google because there's, like, communities that you get for free. There's all these things, you know, and stuff. And, yeah, that's, that's, that's like, how I went with, like, you know, understanding because I needed to know how it really works before I could invest money in it. I needed to know what are the steps, can, can it work for me, you know, 
do people actually do find success out of this and like all those things so i just had to get as much information as possible and was there anything in there that you sort of like you know some key things that really sort of a made it made you understand that people were making money doing this b um i suppose things that videos that you saw or community chats that you saw that like put, pointed you in a direction you were like ah this is what i what i need to do yeah 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 i think i think what that like you know seeing that okay no people are really making money doing this is that like at first like you know when i was still young i would watch videos like you know your mtv clips and like you know most people on mtv clips would be like i'm a stockbroker i'm a stockbroker i'm a stockbroker so i'd, I'd be curious into asking myself what that is and stuff you know so only at the time i started also searching oh no stockbroker is almost like you know trader you know i started just seeing that okay you know these things fall into one thing you understand and the fact that like you know um remember i i, I like whatever that can make me money without me going out there and like you know trying to like if let's say i'm going door to door knocking for me to make money that's tough i don't want that type of business model so the fact that like you know someone said you can sit down and then you can just open up your laptop and then you can just analyze the charts once you've got the skill once you've got the charts done you are able to read them that's when you'll be good so i was like if someone can make i know i i I, at the time i could see a lot of people that were not too successful they were just making decent money like a living let's say decent living but i took it as these people what if i just do the same thing and then i focus more on improving my skill that means there's a higher chance of me being able to just grow because like you know obviously when your skills grow the money is going to show automatically in whatever field there is so yeah i I focus more on that i focus more on that (laughs) Hey, just jumping in here with a message from my sponsor, Sage Strategies. Do you want to trade gold and crypto like the institutions? Well, now you can, and it's free for 14 days with Sage Strategies, fully automated trading strategies. Check out their live track records for 25 unique strategies, plus they'll host everything for you, which is perfect for beginners and advanced traders or investors. Simply sign up for their 14-day free trial at sagestrategies.io and experience it for yourself. Cool. Okay, so you're you're in the you're going to this public Wi-Fi, maxing it out every day. When did you get to the point where you like actually thought, okay, well, I can now, I suppose. Well, first of all, you need to get the internet right to to, to do yeah, some yeah. trading, unless you're going to do it by the Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's true. That is true. How did you get to yeah, that point? Um. So so what happened is that like yeah, um, as soon as like you know maxing out the public Wi-Fi each and every specific day, I was maxing it out, and then like you know at the time I didn't even have a phone. Um, I I I I always like you know would borrow my friend's phone and stuff. So what I done is that now I had to come up with a way of how am I going to approach my mom to 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 get me a phone because now I need a phone. I'm ready to start trading. So 2017 was when like you know everything started to take place because uh, april was when my mom got me my phone and like you know i said i propped like i begged her i was like mom she showed me she's i only have this much in my credit card and you are talking about this business that you want to get into you're saying that it's gonna work you say and i was like like at that time i didn't even fully like no but i just had like something deep down in me that's telling me just go for it like this is like you know this is this is your way out so i you know i begged my mom and then um i saw her take a credit card and then she swept the phone for me and it touched me but it i i I, it taught me something like luckily i didn't use that phone for anything else i just went straight to trading like as soon as she got me that food i was like i don't need anything else it's okay so i used my pocket money my first um account i actually funded with with it with 300 rents which is 22 dollars $22 $22 was like my very first trading account. I went straight to a life account because at the time I already had backed up some information, knowledge. So I knew what I wanted and what I didn't want and stuff, you know. So yeah, I knew the, the two differences between the virtual account and the, and, and the real account. And I actually wanted to just get into trading with like, you know, attaching my feelings. Like let's say, understand, like, you know, being able to trade with that whole feelings of trading with a life account. So yeah, I got to it. $22 was my very first account. And then from there, like, you know, obviously it didn't go well. I think the first, the same day I took the 22, I made like $10 profits. I was excited. I thought I was going to be rich. Like for me, things were, I made $10 that day, but I was like, wow, I'm really making money off the internet. You know, this seems like, I I saw it that way. Like for me, I was like, wow, I'm going to be rich soon and all those things. But obviously like, you know, I lost that money and then I just had to go back and forth. Like, you know, I'll continue using my pocket money to fund more of my accounts and stuff. But yeah. (laughs) And so, so how did <laughs> how did that sort of turning point happen? And I suppose what were you doing on the chart, especially trading on your phone, which is you know not not the easiest thing to do instead of having your no, computer and stuff. I mean, how did yeah. that? How did how were you approaching it? What so, from- um, my whole 
Yeah, yeah. So I would say, so what I've done is that now, since like, you know, I had all this information and stuff. So what I've done now is that I started focusing more on what it is do I need, what, what is it that I need to focus on. So I focused more on like, you know, just learning the charts, learning price action and stuff. And then what, how I would go with learning is that like normally at home day, like, you know, I wouldn't go sleep in the room. I would like literally sleep on the, like on the, on the on the, on the floor like in the in the living room so it's uncomfortable for me at the time i know that if i sleep like you know i fall asleep at 12 like within two three hours i'm gonna be awake you know obviously because the floor is uncomfortable so i'll, I'll only have two to three hours of sleep so i'll do, like i've done that for like a full year first of all like i've done that for a full even till this day if i feel like i'm working on something big i'll do that you understand but um yeah so i've done that i focused more on like you know how can i how can i just max out my time into I'm trading, understanding this whole skills, trading stuff. And then I learned, I think I also wasted a lot of time in learning about like, you know, different types of systems, indicators and that and that and that. Because at that time, I thought I needed to know about everything, you know. So I was learning about everything, every indicator that someone names, I'd go out there, you know, read books, I'd go out there, I'd do, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's just how it is and stuff. And then also with the communities that I was in, I started seeing myself, you know, being, because at first I was just like, like a member that was like not active. I would be quite looking at other people, but bit by bit, I started sharing my analysis. I started sharing my um, mindset, like my perspective, what it is that I think of this, what do I see about this and stuff. And then bit by bit, I started growing in communities. So I would see myself like, you know, people that like, you know, I'd be like, wow, this guy is like very good. He's, I would see like, you know, such people reach out to me and be like, hey, I like the way that you're seeing your charts. Can you please like, you know, let's let's talk more about it. Like, you know, all those things. So it allowed me to to see something different of myself. Um, it allowed me to, just be, to, to, to believe like, you know, that like, there's, there's, there's actually something that, like, you know, I can achieve with, 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 with trading Forex. And, like, you know, with me just by being consistent, I think, like, that, like, played a major part in, in, in me being able to just, like, you know, um, still continue to invo- um, take knowledge, as much knowledge that I, that I can get and use it, like, you know, in, in, as something that can be used to to just um, create a better skill for, yeah, for me to make So you're almost, there. you're almost, like, basically, by contributing to the forum, you're almost sort of teaching yourself how to trade to a certain degree by getting feedback on your ideas and what's happening yes. and ah, okay right 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 and so yeah. what, what, what kind of what kind of approach were you taking to the market from a, a technical point of view at okay, that point? from a technical yeah from a technical point okay obviously like i did say i tried out different systems like you know i tried out like you know your different types of um not even candlesticks like your um your line charts, you know, I tried out like different types of systems. I tried, but like you know, one thing that I that I liked um, most out of each and everything was just by looking at the price action, like you know, naked price action without like you know a lot of things that are there. So what that allowed me to do is that I focused more on like you know time frames too, like you know going from a bigger time frame all the way to a smaller time frame. So I started um, analy- not even analyzing, mastering more on multi time frame analysis looking at your daily time frame for like, you know, bigger movements, what the market is saying, your lower lows, lower highs and stuff, looking at the four hour um, chart or four hour chart time frame for like, you know, your um, pattern identification, like, you know, what pattern is being printed? Is it like, you know, continuation pattern or a reversal pattern? That's what I normally look for at the four. And then the one hour, it depends on like, what, what is it that I want to do? Like, let's say with me, how I trade is that there's two different types of trades that I'll take. Like in the morning, I'm more comfortable in taking those like, you know, 30 minutes to one hour entry that I'd hold like, you know, maybe for a few hours, but like, you know, and then like there's the second session, which is at half past three in our time. Um, that on there, like, you know, I trade for only that five to 10 minutes. So there are like with the, with the one whereby I'll be entering in the morning. Normally what I do is that as soon as I get to the one hour, I'll look for candlestick confirmation, you know, look at what our key areas, where are we now? You know, what am I expecting to see? Um, Maybe if we had support, I'm expecting to see a rejection and all those things. And if let's say we are approaching a specific support, I'll just predict or try to forecast on how I would love for, for, for my ideal setup to present itself just so I can be able to enter on it. But the most important thing that I also focus more on is just like, you know, limiting my risk. Like I noticed that with risk, it's, it's like, yeah, so so every entry that I get, I make sure even if it's one of those perfect setups that I see, I make sure that that entry that I get, like my risk is like super um, limited and my rewards are always like, you know, exponential or greater than the risk, three times greater even. Okay, so in terms of yeah. like your risk to reward, what is it? Is it always three to one or is it sometimes bigger than that, less? 
No, no, no. It's 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 it's, it's always and not. I wouldn't say always three to one. Three to one is like you know my minimum. Like it shouldn't be less than three to one for it to be a good setup for me. It should be three to one. But obviously there will be those setups that like you know maybe TP one would give you let's say four, and then TP two would be promising you eight percent or something similar to that. So that's how I go about with that. It's not always like three to one, but like three to one is like for me to say I'm taking this trade. I want to risk one in order to gain three and if it's not even if it looks like a, a, an ideal setup and stuff if, and most people would think that like you know for us to have risk reward of three to one but normally think that like every time it has to hit target of three and it's not always that way like you know i focus also on what on um locking um profits like till stopping like as soon as it's on one percent automatically i don't want to see negatives anymore i lock like lock like even if it's like 0.10 percent or something small you know or even if it's a break break even and then like the more it goes into profits then the, that's when i'll adjust it and stuff but three to one is like the minimum and then like you know it's exponential exponential i would say <laughs> And so, so when you say a lock in ten percent, are you talking about like you would actually take ten percent off the table, or will you put a, move yeah. your stop into into profit by a small amount? Yeah, I'd I'd put my stop into profit by a small amount. So normally I wouldn't just take it off at first. Yeah, I'll just put it into. Then maybe once I've reached like the first take profit, and I see that okay, no, this thing is still impulsing to my specific direction. That's when I'll only take a specific percentage out, and then I'll let the other you know roll, and then I'll just lock as much profit as as I can. And uh, what time frame are you entering in on to get like decent risk to reward trades like that? Or oh, decent risk to reward trades, I'd enter from like five minutes to fifteen minutes. Like that's when I get like the best um decent um risk reward ratios. Like even like you know sometimes when I want to enter from the one hour time frame, I will go as little as the fifteen minutes just to you know give me that like you know sniper type entry. Like you know because once you get that fifteen minute or five minute candle that has given us let's say engulfing on support. Like instead of you having to wait for the one hour candle, you can easily take that as a signal. And once the one hour candle closes, automatically you are in profits. You can already know how you're going to manage your trade and stuff. So yeah, I, I like, I like, uh, I'm more focused on managing trades because I noticed that, yes, you know, I'm like executing, you know, analyzing and all those things. It's, 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 it's nice. Like, you know, especially when you've been on the charts for a very long time, but managing trade is something that I learned till this day, you know, like managing trades is like, you know, because the same setup that you saw yesterday that made you a lot of money, it can come today and it can be something different, you understand? And so it's all about how you manage. And like once you start going into profit, what do you do? Do you take some profits because of past um, experiences? Like, you know, where you made a lot of money and then it went out. Or do you, like, you know, do you just let it run till it hits your take profit? So I'm more, I'm more focused on, like, you know, upgrading my, you know, management on a daily basis, yeah. And so on that note, I mean, what's what kind of win rate do you have or what percentage of trades do you lose, should I say? Because, you know, if you get broken broken out even, then you count that as a win. But, I mean, what's your what's your losing rate? Oh, okay. So so what I've done is that, like, you know, 2018, 2019, I spent a lot of time because 2018, like, there was a time I, a little, I made a lot of money off the markets. Like, I made a lot of, like, it was like a year in, like, yeah, I think on my second year, I made a lot of money and then I lost all that money. I couldn't keep, I could and like, you know, I went through a depress, like I was depressed at the time, you know, it was tough. I didn't have money to trade, I didn't have money to fund my accounts and stuff. But how much are you talking I about did, here in terms of how much did you make and how much did you lose? Also, um, at first, like, you know, I had a, 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 an account that we had like from 181 pounds to, we grew it like in a week to over like, um, five, what's it, 3,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds, you know. like My 181 pounds. pounds. Pounds, yeah, to three thousand pounds in just like those days, and yeah, and personally, like also me on my side, like you know, um, in terms of like the growth that I've made, I was able to make um like over three hundred and fifty thousand rents, but in in dollars, I would say twenty thousand dollars, and I'm still like nineteen years old, you know, and at the time, like you know, for me, it's a bit like you know. I didn't understand because I haven't got a job and like, you know, I'm doing all these things and the banks are telling me this. like, it's just like, you know, I, I was experiencing a lot of things, but I made that much and like, I couldn't keep it. So I lost like as much and I was left in debt because there was a point where I even had to take, um, um, borrow money from friends. So I was left in debt of, of over like 150,000 rents, which is, uh, ten thousand dollars let's say ten thousand dollars yeah i was left in that debt. and, and, and so, how was that was that because you were borrowing money that you on credit cards and stuff and and, and it wasn't even credit card it was that thing of like you know i would approach your friends and then i'd show them like you know i've got this proven system that's mm-hmm. working you see i was able to grow i was able to make money well, like i just need more capital in order of me to make more so how about you guys invest in like you know my skill so i approached like two friends of mine two good friends and 
you know, they didn't have problems. Like it was like, yeah, it took long for them to, you know, fully believe in whatever that they had, but they could see my results that, okay, you know, this guy here is speaking with like, you know, um, he's confident with his, his, his results. Cause at that time, like, you know, um, I was, I was just focused too much on trading. Like I was just doing a lot of things and stuff, but because of the pressure and because of now I, I had to pay back and because that like, you know, ended up putting me in debt and that ended up like, you know, taking me back. So now I'm left in debt and like, it was like it was a tough moment, but how I done what I done is that like you know I focused on the things that I done that helped me get there, which was like reading books, which was like you know psychology. I was focused more on psychology. Um, I I was also focused more on the psychology. It was reading books and then back testing. Yeah. So for me to say this is is, is because of back testing too, because I, I wanted to answer your question that you just asked of the wind rate and stuff. So that's when like I actually bumped into you know back testing. I focused more on. Any information that I, I think I watched every video on back testing that you can get on YouTube, <laughs> like yeah, and then like you know um, so I just went. I started back testing, you know. I back tested like the way that I see the markets, my rewards. I back tested like you know specific currencies, and then that's when I started to do it, to even evolve from currencies into indices because now I'm more focused on US thirty on its own. But you know I I back tested a lot of those and like what. Just those those results, I could see that my strategy is um like you know um my it's 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 profitable you know profitable not in a way of like you know I have a um like we hundred percent win rate and everything but like you know sixty percent of trades that I take I can secure over two percent like at least you understand on those on on those trades so that's one thing that, yeah two percent even though because like every my minimum would be three percent but like normally you know trades would can go up and then like you know it can retrace a bit and then take you out at um. At, at, at when you at trail stop when you've locked in profits so I, I noticed that like with the way that i see the markets and stuff and me just adjusting my stop losses to lower lows and lower highs and stuff like you know there's a like 60 percent of the trees that i take um yeah yeah i can go home with at least like two percent of that so yeah i use the data to to now understand what is it that i'm doing in the markets because like you know in the markets when you are forward testing on or when you are trading at that specific time you know it's different like even if you know that you're not supposed to do this there's a higher chance of you doing something that you're not supposed to do you know so i had to come up with with like you know a solid plan um like it's it's like thick like this. i wanted to even get in show but it's thick like this like that solid plan i came up with a solid plan and like in there it was like disciplines rules that i have to follow it's like you know um my goals my trading goals obviously like, i i i had to not treat my trading as a business like you know what is it what is it that i'm trying to achieve what income am i trying to achieve what like what am i looking for in the markets if i win after winning trades what do i do if i lose after losing trade what is this what is it that i do after a successful day after a successful um you know week month those things you know i came up with like you know a list i said then it took me like two months to just come up with everything i sat down i came up with it and then i just had to now make it be a part of me like you know learn it on a big basis and stuff so yeah so so um in terms of like this type of style that you trade or you traded back back when you were starting off and then getting good to now yeah. i mean do you if you had to give it a name what what name would you call it um like in, in, how in terms of what in terms of like is it you know um a smart money concept or uh uh, just a swing trading or something or price action or whatever something like that price action, yeah i think i think I'll, I'll, I'll just stick to the name being like you know naked price action because that's what i i literally focus on like you know um yeah just naked price action so if i want to give it a name like i'd I'd say it's the naked price action but yeah <laughs> and, and when you're entering on those like lower time frames i mean what kind of entries are you taking market orders limit orders how does it look I'm more comfortable with, um, you know, orders, like, you know, not limit orders instead, like buy stop, sell stop orders. I'm more comfortable with those. But at times, like, you know, I, what I'll do is that, like, um, I'll just enter it first. Like, let's say if I'm, I'm allowed to use, let's say, lot sizes of 0.25 on that specific trade. What I'll do is that if I feel like, okay, now I can enter here, but it's not yet com- um, confirmed, I'd rather go in with 0.10 as a safe i'll keep the same stop and then once like you know it is like let's say broken above that level whereby i'd have put my buy stop at that's when like you know i'll place like zero the rest lot sizes that i need to put like 0.15 i'll leave it there as a buy stop so i'm more comfortable with orders like um buy stops and sell stops cool and um okay. in terms of like the uh the types of um instruments you're trading so now versus back in the day and how have you sort of progressed and why did you progress no. <laughs> You know, speaking about that, I remember back in the days, like, you know, I would look at 
all the current CPAs, like all the current CPAs, like, you know, 28 pairs out, analyze. So what I've done is that, like, you know, um, I Friday, Friday out, like, you know, filter out, like, you know, I'll start off first by, okay, let me prepare for the next week. I have done this with, with my team. So what we do is that I'll take all the pairs, look at the bigger time frame daily. Um, also for our, I was only focusing on the bigger time frames on Friday, daily for our, seeing if I'm understanding something. And then Saturday, what I'll do is that obviously out of the 28 currencies, I would have to filter out because others I won't see anything. So Saturday I would have like maybe 12 pairs that are like on my radar that I'm looking at. So the whole Saturday, not even the whole Saturday, I'll dedicate maybe three hours to just like, you know, analyzing, seeing what I'm understanding, see specifics, like, you know, what is the saying? What, and then after I get that, I have to filter it out to, it was even funny because it, 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 it took me a lot of time, but I had to filter it out to eight pairs. So on Sunday I would filter out all eight pairs and then I would look at, okay, for the week, I need to pick top six. And then out of that top six, I need to pick the top three best pay setups that I, I need to make sure that I don't mess up on these. So that's what I've done every weekend. And it took a lot of my time, but it helped me a lot. You know, I invested a lot of time in the markets and just learning. I think, yeah, it, it played a major part at that time. Even though now I can say I wasted it. I wasted a lot of time, but it played a major part because I invested a lot of time in the markets. And then, like, you know, yeah, I would have my top six. And then I would focus on my top six for the whole week. Like, I know... I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this, and I'm waiting for this to just show me this. I'm waiting for this to get to this level. Like, that's how I'd go about with it. So, yeah, now I have evolved. I went through, I went from looking at all of those currencies, all of those pairs, to I think it was last year, beginning, no, not last year, last of last year, December, I got introduced to indices. Like, I've always seen people trade them, but I just, you know, wanted more. So I just you know, got information and I noticed like, you know, pip value differences, pips points and all those things. Then I fell a bit more in love with them, in, in, especially also in terms of like, you know, um, the companies, it's, 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 it's much more easier to follow in terms of also fundamentals, in terms of if you are a fundamental person, but I'm more technical, you know, so even technicals, like, you know, um, I, I love the fact that I didn't have to change a single thing. I just had to evolve and adapt, you know, I didn't have to change the way that I'm trading. So I got, at first, I was looking at NASDAQ, the NAS 100, and US 30, and also DEX, the German 30. So um, after that, I think I looked at that for like three months, and then I moved a bit more. I started like, you know, falling more in love. I also, there was a part where I was also looking at oil for a specific time frame, and then I just, you know, moved a bit backwards. Like, you know, after that three months, I moved backwards. I started seeing what's actually working. I needed like more data. Because I needed data. I had currency data, but I didn't have these new indices that I'm trading data. So I needed data. After three months, I was able to develop the data. I looked at it. Then I was able to see, okay, no, for me, even though a lot of people are making money off of the next one, and for me, I'm making more money off US 30. It's moving. Like, for me, it's not too volatile. You know, NAS was a bit too volatile. Um, significant areas, you know, I'd see it break and come back. And for me, that was like a bit more emotional and stuff. And, you know, yeah, and I just started focusing on US 30. And then I went back to currency. But currency, I kept it, like, you know, limited to only one currency, which is GBP, JPY. Till this day, like, I only focus on GBP, JPY and also, um, you know, US 30. So, but GBP, JPY, it's not... Like that currency is not like, you know, something that I'm more dedicated. I don't dedicate most of my time into and I'm more comfortable even in swinging it. Like, you know, instead of like, you know, day trading it, I'm more comfortable with swinging it. And when it comes to US 30, that's when I do both, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with swinging it and as well day trading it daily basis. Yeah. And, and how many trades a week are you putting on? Um, trades a week, I'd say maybe in a day, I would put two trades, two, two trades, yeah, two, two trades, um, I would put in a day. So that's like 10 trades a week. Ne? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 10 trades a week. Yeah. And so that was, would that be one in each session or just whenever they appear? Uh, whenever they appear, whenever they appear. So normally in the morning, I'll just get like, you know, one setup, but you know, um, even as like, I would say one trade or two trades, obviously there'll be sometimes where like, you know, I'll place trades and then it would automatically go against me hit stop loss and then i'll see that it's still there's still a higher chance of it going there so i'll just have to do it to re-enter that's why like i even came up with the rule by like you know i shouldn't re-enter more, re more than two times on a on a specific like setup that i fully believe in you know so i'll give myself you know another chance to re-enter but if it hits me again then i'll just have to stay back but yeah <laughs> so um what do you think back in the day made you different from a trait point of view so something that's i suppose different that you see amongst other people that have potentially come through and learned from you or, or you saw on the or in the forums and stuff what do you think made you as a person different not necessarily what's happened to you because we've we've sort of gone through that but more from yeah. a the, the mindset point of view 
the mindset. Okay, I think I think it was you know just me being eager to you know um get the skill because like you know I've always like you know seen people do this talk about this and all those things, but I just I was curious into knowing how great I would be like once I've acquired the skill. And it wasn't easy like uh, like obviously you know watching videos doing all those things that just plays a part. I think that's like you know one of a small um part like in, in, in what actually made me, you know, stand out or become something because what actually happened is that like, you know, automatically I started seeing that I started teaching people in these quorum, um, community forums. Like it was just like public groups and stuff. And I'll just give advices. I'll just teach here wherever I can. I'll just like, you know, um help in, in like with someone sends out their thing. I'll just help and stuff. And then I remember there was a time, this other one group that I, I like, I looked up to the people that were in the end, like, you know, within, a few months time like you know i was like one of the top people in there and i'd ask myself like how you know because like everyone here i was like wow these people are like and now yeah i am like people are like this guy is the best and i'm, I'm not even at the time I'm not teaching I'm, not doing, I'm just like you know giving advice i'm just helping i'm just doing all these things and then but i'm um, also what, what, what one of the things that it does that it done to me was that like you know i noticed that like i enjoyed teaching but not only teaching i noticed that when you're teaching, you are learning, you know, like mm. oh, the more you teach, the more you learn. So that's, that's, that's how I came. My mom was like, why don't you just like, you know, start your own like um, teaching company and stuff. Cause I'll do it for free. Like I remember I'll catch a cab, go to like, or, or go to like, you know, um, people that would ask me to teach, teach them and stuff. And like, when I get there, that person, like we had an interview, we, I mean, we had a meeting that I'm going to be there 10 and I'm going to teach you, show you specific stuff. When I get there, that person is not there or that person is not ready. <laughs> and my mom was like, you see, now you're using your money for this. Why don't you, why don't you charge them? Because if someone takes out money, then it's a must, you know, like they will be there, they will show up. It shows that they're interested. And I was like, ah, mama, I don't think someone would pay me money to just like, you know, lend this. She's like, give it a go. But I remember like, you know, I, like I just, as soon as I started doing that, like automatically it it in my head it started like you know teaching me a lot like you know i needed to know like obviously like when you are teaching you need to teach people in a specific um structure you need to start from the very basics you know like you know your candlesticks your your understanding everything the business model the leverage the margins and stuff going all the way to like you know um like like things like uh, you know, powerful things like let's say things such as like you know um affirmations like you know meditation psychology side of things you know all those things so for me to get all of that structure, like, you know, obviously I needed to understand the structure myself. So that's one thing that, like, you know, um, helped me, like me trying to understand that, obviously when someone would be like, I don't understand what, um, what is the difference between the pip of NASDAQ and the pip of, um, 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 of, 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 of what you call it, of currencies. I had to know the answer. So what do you, it means that I have to go out there and get the info. I have to outline everyone, you know. Yeah. So I didn't, my, my competition wasn't the best in the game. My competition was outlining everyone including myself you know so yeah that's 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 one thing that helped me a lot like you know just teaching i think sharing information is one of the things that like you know um allowed me to to grow more faster exponentially even now you, you mentioned here that you you said you know trying to get a skill or trying to grow the skill was your main focus right whereas yeah. most people's is trying to grow their bank account is the main focus why do you think that <laughs> yours was growing the skill and why do you think you sort of stumbled across that as your key focus as opposed to generating cash or you know growing yeah. the account in the first instance because that essentially is the is the that is the that is the key right is to focus mm-hmm. on the skill focus on the process and not focus on the money why do you think from somebody who had you know such a humble background um yeah. and you know did had a background in you know doing business and studying up things why do you think that was the sort of main focus for you um, I think I think the, the the fact or the experience that I've seen myself making money and losing money was one thing that made me not have any um, emotions that that I could attach towards money anymore. You know, I could see myself make money and lose money here and there with different businesses, with even with just trading in itself. I'd see myself make money and lose money. But one thing that like you know, I came across one video because one thing that I like about trading is that. It teaches you personal development, you know, automatically, like I was never a person to read books. I was, I was never a person to do like anything like that's personal development, you know, but with trading, it teaches you like it somehow. And like, I dropped like, um, one thing that I forgot to mention, I'm um, 2018, beginning of the year, I dropped out of college, you know, I dropped out of college. I decided to go full time on trading, even though I wasn't yet consistently profitable at the time, but I just believe that if I dedicate more time, just like, you know, a student would dedicate three years in going to, um, varsity and then you know passing it at, at university and then do, how about like you know i dedicate my time into doing that you know so yeah i i i focused more on 
I'm not looking at the money side of things because money can easily be made and removed. I've seen myself be broke. I've seen myself make money and stuff. But one thing that, like, from the YouTube video that I watched, I think it was, like, Dan Lock or something, while learning personal development and stuff, um, he mentioned, like, you know, something such as, like, you know, a skill. If you've got a skill or to, if you're alone more, like, whatever that you do, anything, whatever skill that you have, and let's say now you are making $100 an hour, do you realize that like if you increase your value if you focus on yourself you don't have to go out there so you just focus on you and you increase your value you increase your skill there's a higher chance of you going from making a hundred dollars an hour to a thousand dollars an hour doing the same thing and like you know i was like i need to understand how that works so i like it's all about just focusing on skill including increasing your value as a person becoming the best in like you know um the, like whatever field industry that you're in, just become the best. Read as many books, whatever books that people recommend or don't even recommend, read those books and like, you know, watch as many videos and stuff and like do all those things, yeah. <laughs> it, I, so, I vaguely uh, think I might have seen that same video from Dan Locke, did you say? Is it Dan Locke? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, Dan yeah. Locke, yeah, Dan yeah. Locke. <laughs> I think I might have seen yeah. that one myself. Now, um, yeah. what about somebody who's uh, who's not you, who's working a day job? What, would you, what okay. steps would you say, hey, look, take these steps, it'll get you on the track to growing an account? Okay, I think um, the, the the approach that I went with me growing my account, like, you know, from, like, um, a small amount to, like, let's say, a big account and being able to just um, diversify their income and stuff was, like, you know, I don't recall um, compound interest, you know, like, being able to, let's say I funded, like, you know, um, $200. I remember the last time I funded, like, you know, that, that was, like, the last time I funded for me to get, like, let's say, a breakthrough or something, $200. And then from there, like, you know, I focused more on, let me just look into making, even if it's just like, you know, $50 profit at the end of the month. Like, you know, I just want at the end of the year for me to still be able to have a three. I don't want to take an account from $200 to $10,000. And then after maybe a month or two, I haven't got an account anymore. You understand? So I wanted like, you know, um, I, I also one thing that I like, um, I got this from Mark Mark Hutchinson. He's the founder of Falcon FX. No, he said, um, he said, yeah, show, yeah, he said, He's been on the show, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I also once took his course in 2018, 19, somewhere around. There. It helped me massively. It played a part to me. But um, so he mentioned something um, such as like you know, um, forex is actually because uh, before I went, before I became a part of his community and stuff, um, he, he, like I would always see it as forex is something that you can make money, you know, and then here and there, like yeah, obviously I need the skill in order to make money, but I didn't see it as. It's 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 one of the things that we need. It's a vehicle that that's gonna help you build, you know, sustainable wealth, like in the future and stuff. You know, so as soon as I got that information, I got that knowledge. I was like, it means that I need to grow this, you know, like I need to take this as my portfolio. I need to treat this as a as something that's super legit and serious. So yeah, I think that person should focus more on treating forex as a business, but forex as a business in terms of um, you know, making sure that whatever that they've deposited, don't try to double, triple, do all those massive numbers. But instead, make sure that at the end of each and every month, you've still got your account. You haven't, you know, blew your account. And mo- most importantly, you've made, even if it's like 5% profits, you know, because that 5% in two years' time, if your account is big, once your account is bigger, it will be bigger. If you focus on it, obviously it will be. Once your account is big, that 5% is no longer going to be 5%. It's no longer going to be the 5% of $200. It's now going to be 5% of maybe, let's say, $100,000. You understand? So you just got to focus more on... um making sure that your account is still there with you for the next few months, few years and stuff. And most importantly, just like, you know, um, compound interest, continue just growing it. Like, you know, that small three, five percent a month, like, you know, it plays a major part. It plays a major part in 12 months. Awesome. Good advice. Good advice. Now, um, what about if you had to say to a, re- a novice retail trader or even an intermediate trader, what three things would you f- to focus on on a price chart? What would they be? Um, so obviously, like, you know, at first, like, you know, I'm um, while speaking of pressures, like, you know, I'm more focused also on the mindset psychology side of things. So before I trade, before I analyze, like, that's, even my, now, next, that's my next question. Oh, that's your okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, next question. Let me, okay, let me not speak of it. Let me, I, won't, <laughs> I won't speak of it. Okay. So the most important thing is understanding, like, you know, the movement, um, the momentum of the markets. Um, obviously you need to, what, like, even if you know the momentum is going upwards and you just buy randomly, there's a higher chance of you making profits. You understand? So yeah, you just have to understand the momentum. Secondly, like, you know, um, understand, like, you know, um, let's say if you're looking at 
what, what, what's actually being, being um, what, what is price telling you? Are we experiencing a continuation out of this move? It's if, if it's correction, like, you know, I'm, I work with the nature's theory, which is like your impulse correction, impulse. So if it's in a correction, look at what type of correction is being printed, you know. That correction is actually going to help you be able to spot the next impulsive move, which can be either to the upside or to the downside, depending on if there is a continuation or a reversal um, correction. And then um, also, like, you know, candlestick. Candlestick is the most important important thing because i like you know with, with even the definition of it it says a lot like the candlestick is the you know visual representation of like price data so automatically like you know without candle like just by looking at candle you are seeing the visual um representation of what the price is actually so the open the close the the highest the low so look at candlesticks and understand what each and every candlestick actually the momentum of each and every candlestick that's gonna help you be able to see the what the next candlesticks are gonna do and seeing the next candlestick automatically you are able to capture pips off of that oh, awesome great advice guys rewind that and listen to it again please now um <laughs> what, now we can dive into the trader's mindset so what do you okay. what do you got to say Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Speaking about the traders' mindset is that like, you know, um um one thing that actually helped me um get into me being consistent because you can get the skill but not be consistent, or why would that be? It'll be because of the mindset. Né? A lot of people, the reason like till this day they're able to like I see people that are joining courses and they're not finding success. It could be that subconsciously they are thinking or believing that it's still Forex is a scam. So automatically when you believe that Forex is a scam, even if you are learning from the best subconsciously like you know your beliefs are against your action that means if you're learning and you're trading your beliefs are against your action so it's impossible of you to make it in forest because you automatically believe that it's a scam so yeah i think you know we need to focus more on the mindset like you know subconscious mindset or automatic uh, obviously there's two minds like you know the subconscious and the and the conscious mind so if you feel more positive um you know, information into your conscious mind. Like, you know, you just tell yourself that you're consistent. You tell yourself that you're on a winning streak. You know, you 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 do things that are actually going to make you believe, like, you know, that you are one that's actually worthy into being in a specific position. Like, you know, things such as, like, you know, what I do is that, you know, I affirm, I meditate, you know, just to clean my mind. I enter with a clean perspective. Meditate, you know, just like 10, 15 minutes. You can go on YouTube, search, you know, um, clean um, meditations, like, you know, guided meditations, like 5, 10 minutes. You can get that. I do that, and then um, I also affirmations. You know, I affirm myself to be um, evolving on a daily basis, no matter what the market is doing. I affirm myself to be, and I also affirm myself because like trading is like you are your own boss. You don't have someone telling you do this and that. So I also like you know do things such as like you know being able to just respect and um, focus on my rules and disciplines and stuff. So I have to continuously you know tell myself that look in the mirror tell myself before trading that you know i stick to my trading plan no matter how, what setup i'm seeing on the charts um you know and and, and all those things and yeah yeah i think i think my, my mentally like you know i just prepare myself mentally and then i i focus more on allowing my subconscious mind to believe that like you know one thing that i like even to the, the way that i've been able to train my mindset is that Normally, when I'd get a negative day, I'd think a negative day is a negative week, and a negative week is a negative month. Then that means I can't reach my goals. I'd see it that way. So automatically, when I'd have a negative day, I'd feel like negative week, negative month, and then that means even the next day I'll feel bad because automatically I'm feeling like it's gonna be a bad month for me, and the week I'll end it bad. And you understand? So that's how it go about. But now I I changed my mindset. I think that's what everyone should focus more on. Negative day is not that for me anymore. Like, you know, a negative day is just like, you know, any other day, like, you know, I'm less and, you know, I grow and all those things. And like, you know, the most important things that, that I was able to also um, understand is that like, you know, when I'm not mentally prepared to enter trade or execute on trades, then let me rather preserve my capital because like, you know, if you don't place trades, it doesn't mean that you lose money. You actually saved money because you could have lost money when by placing trades, you understand? So I focus a bit more on that too. And like, yeah, yeah, like, you know, mentally, I'm just more, like, subconsciously, I just now believe, even if I didn't take a positive three today, I know that, like, you know, end of this month, no matter what, I'm ending with a profit. My daughter's going to be taken care of. My business, my company's going to run perfectly. I'm still, I'm still, yeah, I'm still growing, you know. So, yeah, yeah. I think mentally, like, I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware with, with, like, you know, um, what I'm doing in this trading world, yeah. I like what you said there uh, early on where you were sort of saying, look, you know, if you just say you've, you've had a winning streak or you're on a winning streak or, you know, all these sort of positive um, affirmations into your head, are, you know, they might not yeah. be true, but if you if you tell yourself that they are true, then you're bound to believe it and you got to change your mindset. And I, Mark Hutchinson, funnily enough, had a great little um, little tip that he left us with on his show where he sort of said, uh, 
like if you want to be a trader go grab a grab a, your laptop go to a coffee shop and trade from the coffee shop and experience that trader's you know that trader's lifestyle and pretend that you're a trader <laughs> so it's almost like pretend your way there and you'll get there pretend yeah right <laughs> we're going to jump into the quick fire round here before we uh, wrap up the show now the uh, first question is how long did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable I'd say from newbie to consistently profitable could be like two years, um, 18 months to two years, yeah. 18 months to 24 months, yeah. What's your favorite entry setup? Uh, a favorite entry setup is like, you know, um, as soon as like, you know, like I did say, understanding my momentum and then going all the way down, like, you know, getting, normally I'm more comfortable, especially on your state, I'm more comfortable with longs. I'm more profitable on the long long side compared to short side. So when I see a continuation pattern or I see myself being at like, you know, support and stuff, then like, you know, I'm going down to your one hour. 15 minutes is like where I'm more comfortable with the entries to instead of like just seeing on the one hour. So 15 minutes I'll be looking for. Um, it's either a hammer or engulfing candle. Engulfing candles are you know, um, I, I, like they, they actually give me more confidence whenever I see them. And I, I also focus more on what we call candlestick mathematics. Like even if this 15 minute, minute candle didn't close this way, I'm able to just, you know, add or subtract with the previous candlestick in order to just come up with my own candlestick, you know, in terms of maybe the two hour, luckily trading view shows us that, but in the terms of the two hour or the 45 minutes and stuff, and then I'm able to just like, you know, um move forward with it. But yeah, like candlestick mathematics or candlestick is like, you know, the most important thing. Yeah. Now, what about uh, your strategies for exiting or managing trades? Yeah, okay. So for exiting or managing trades is that like, let's say on, on the long side of things, I'll wait for price to break, like, you know, that specific. If let's say it came from creating lower lows and, low, and lower highs, once it breaks, you know, the previous lower lower high, and then it comes and then test the like, biggest support and then continue going out. Then now I'm starting to see higher, 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 low, higher, higher. So whenever I would log into by putting it below each and every low, I'm um, higher low. So I'd go with higher lows and higher lows. And the more it creates a higher low, I'd put it there. And once it's at the resistance, maybe, and then it breaks above, I'll just try to also lock as much as pro- profits as possible, hoping that it will come to just test back, um, you know, that um support, resistance tend into support. And then moving forward, I just want that to turn into a low. Mm. I don't want price to be lower than that. I don't want a positive to turn into a negative. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you always get stopped out. out instead of taking profit or will you ever take profit? I'm more, no, no, I, I, I'm, me, I'm more into, I always get stopped out instead of taking profit. Like instead of, yeah, I'm more. Letting it taking, run. Um, yeah. Letting it run. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm more comfortable. Yeah. Um, do you have a recommended trading book or resource? Mm, so trading book, I'll say, you know, obviously one of the books that changed my mind was like, you know, the trading, what's it, Naked Forex. I'm also, um, what's it, this other one, The Trading Coach. There's a book that like, in terms of discipline, the, the trading coach is one of the books that like you know um, are, are powerful i think people should check it out and yeah and naked forex that's one that i i can say for now and yeah obviously like you know um in terms of things resources or things that i believe like you know this this um the youtube your youtube channel is already on its own like you know it's like there's information that i recommend people to watch it but luckily the people watching this video are, are like automatically on the youtube channel but also like you know um there's also other like you know podcast and 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 and, and 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 things such as like what's it chat with traders something similar yeah chat with traders like you know there's people should invest their time into learning and hearing about other traders because like when you hear and learn about other traders that's when you will see that okay no some of the obstacles or experiences that you're going through this person has been through and they were able to jump over it this way or not even that like you you are just able to see what your journey for new newbies you are able to see what your journey is most definitely gonna look like you understand and yeah i think i think those are Mm. those are um yeah cool what's your preferred broker and trading platform um currently i'm with i'm with um i'm with three brokers i'm to be exact i'm with fx pro i'm with veracity markets which is a local broker which is a south african broker i'm with fx pro so that one there i use it for like you know like it's it's there's like you know obviously there's things that like you know i need like in terms of like you know monthly one two three one two three in terms of goals personal goals and stuff but there's also like you know um go long-term goals that i have like you know i'm building this doing this for my parents one two three so that's like you know the other broker and i'm also with this fx pro um and i see markets and then veracity i see markets is from the australian fx pro, i think the us i'm not too sure and then um veracity is a local broker south african broker cool hey folks ever wonder what broker i use well i use hanko trade it was a no-brainer because i was looking for a broker with good trading conditions and one that wouldn't restrict my leverage now by joining hanko trade i've also cut down my trading costs significantly with this 
super low commission of just $1 per 100K. You can learn more at hankotrade.com or just click the link I've put in the description. Awesome. Now, yeah. do you want to walk us through your worst ever trade? My worst day of trading? Wor- your worst ever trade. Oh, my worst ever trade. Um, I think <laughs> I think this one it came across, you know, just after I started learning that the more trades you take, the better you become. I, that is true, but it's only true to, to a specific point because, like, you know, obviously the more trades you take, the better you become. But I took it in the wrong way. I took it as, let me take as many trades as possible, you understand? So, so um, yeah, I went in, uh, like, I had, a like, a big account at the time, you know, and I was excited, you know. I, I just wanted to take as many trades as possible, and I wanted to just grow that account massively too. And... What I've done is that, like, you know, I executed, I saw that beautiful setup, and then price kept on pushing downwards. I don't know what was happening at that time. It started just shooting downwards, and then, you know, um, it broke the low. So what I've done is that I, I, I was like, okay, you know, it's against me. I took my losses. And then once it got to another support, it was like, okay, maybe, yeah, it's safe for me to enter. I went in again, and I went in a bit more bigger, um, with bigger lot sizes because I had that mindset of I wanted when it gets to the level whereby it was at um, where I entered at first, I want to already be in profits and make back the money that I lost, you understand? So <laughs> so I went in with bigger loss. <laughs> and then price just went down a bit. And while going down, I was like, I ah, know it can't go lower than this. So I just scaled, scaled more positions. I scaled more position to like, you know, I was running at a heavy negative, um, negative, like, you know, and yeah, I think I lost like, you know, maybe like 80,000 rands at that time, which was like my biggest loss in a very short amount of time. 80,000 rands would be equal maybe six six thousand dollars yeah i think it would say six thousand dollars and you know I'm, I'm still trying to figure myself here and there and stuff so losing that much money and it took me like that, that whole method that i told you of how i built my account like you know compound interest like you know just it took me all those like you know years to just do that and i'm losing in just like a few hours i lost this much like it it, it, it nearly broke me but you know i just had to stay away from the markets like you know for a week or two and like you know yeah just come back with a clean mindset see the wrongs that are done and then just focus more on you know disciplining myself you know because mm. even after this whole hijacking thing also what i done is that i just stayed a bit more away from the markets for like maybe a few days to come back with a clean mindset you know because i didn't want to just trade under pressure or trade with a, with a different mindset but yeah i think i think that is like you know the worst days that i've ever experienced <laughs> it is it's shocking <laughs> right now uh, what about leaving our listeners with one piece of advice mm, one piece of advice one piece of advice is that um i believe like you know from my side the thing that i'm going to be sharing with the listeners out there um is that like you know automatically when i started understanding the fact that you know the mind is a very powerful thing like you know especially like trading teaches you more about yourself i learned more about me via trading i don't think any other career that i would have done even if i went to become a doctor like you know in school i don't think i would have ever became like super aware about myself you understand so trading taught me all all, all like psychology mentally and stuff so along the way i started being um, I'm interested in you know things such as like you know your, your law of attraction you know and all those things and like you know automatically i started figuring out this one information that i think um it's it's i believe it's free it's free obviously but i think you know one of the free things you know free stuff are things that we don't value most you understand whatever that you get for free you never value but instead whatever that you take out money for you value so for instance like you know a baby you'd get a baby for free but you know you wouldn't like value as much as like you know a friend that you have to always like you know spend money on taking out one to train all those things but not even that like even having dreams having thoughts mindsets and stuff that's like you know it's easy to to dream of becoming a consistently profitable trader you know you just have to start thinking of it dreaming it and then make it be like you know a like you know a goal like 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 thoughts that are always around you and then one thing that you should do is that you should also attach feelings towards that like you know feel yourself being a consistently profitable trader see the actions see what your life feel yourself living that life of a consistently profitable trader and stuff and then like you know automatically what's going to happen is that um, it's gonna it's gonna start to slowly unfold itself, and you know, um, I one of the scenes that I also got from Dan Lok was that way energy goes and um attention flows, and then results start to show. So yeah, you should start like you know speak up, but like see it, see it in your head before it even exists and stuff. Because anything that you want is literally out there. This phone, if I want this phone, like it's 
out if you want this phone, you want to have a phone like this, you don't have to invent it yourself. You just have to go to the store and get it. But now to get it, they'll need something from you, which is money, you understand? So it's not like it's not there or whatever, that card that, that you want is there. Like consistency in the, in the market, it's not like it's impossible. There's consistently profitable traders out there that are really there. You can just get knowledge from them, you understand? So just see it, um, um, believe it to be true, and then feel it, and yeah, you, you automatically start to have it, anything that you want in life, not just in terms of trading, but business-wise, you know, how much you'd want to make a month. I remember I had goals of this, this is how much I wanted to make it. But, and it's funny because now the goals that I had like three years ago of my monthly income, I make that like literally in a day. And like, you know, just because of the, the, the this whole concept that I'm sharing with you guys, you know, but yeah, yeah, I think you should, you should um, focus more on that and have goals, have goals. If you don't have goals, you are just like, you know, a ship that's being put in the ocean. And then it says, drive go anywhere that ship is going to end up anywhere it's going to end up either on an island it's just going to be it's going to sink you know all those things but if a ship is named that i'm going straight to new york and that direction is new york even if it takes 10 years or three years what if it's going to new york the destination is going to end up in new york you understand so have goals and trading goals have personal goals have a routine and yeah just focus more on that That's and believe good. in yourself yeah great advice guys so yeah get some goals believe them and then feel them and you know magic will happen right now before we wrap up what's the best way for the traders to get hold of you um you know instagram it's lisiba underscore steez that's where you'll get me on instagram and then i'm also on youtube you know i've got my own youtube ch- channel where i share a lot of information valuable information and stuff they can learn also from it which is lisiba mutupi my name and surname and yeah i think i think and also forex Jesus, you know um it's um the company my company that i do have which teaches individuals to be able to just look at the market in a perspective that i was able to develop um it's forexjesus.com they can look at that forexjesus.com and yeah i think i think that's that's how they can get a hold of cool. me. Email if I if if I can leave my email to info at forexjesus.com. But yeah. <laughs> cool. Brilliant. Well look, um, a big thank you to Lasiba here for sharing with us today. Everything we discussed here, along with all those links you just mentioned, are in the show notes. We'll put a link underneath this video or if you're listening to the podcast in the description. To find them, simply search for Lasiba. And that's uh, L-E-S-I-B-A in the search box on tradingnut.com if you're over there. Until next time, I wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. All right, folks, there you have it. Interview with Lasiba done and dusted. Do remember, go and check out that video where he breaks down his trade on a price chart. So you're actually going to see him trade and walk through a price chart there over on the Trading Nut YouTube channel. Whilst you're there, do remember, check out the Freak Bot that I created, which is a Fibonacci retracement trading algorithm. You're going to find out how it works and you're going to see the back test results. And if you do want to see the live demo test that I'm running currently which has been running for one week as as of recording this then head over to tradingnut.com click on the robots tab and then click on the uh, robot builders club and you're going to find it down the bottom of the page all that information there around that bot how it's performing and see if it's right for you if it is then you want to jump on board this October 2021 to get your hands on that particular robot it's only available this month to download when you join my robot builders club all right guys Thanks for watching the show. Do remember, Genius Trader coming out as well. Uh, Yeah, a lot going on here at Trading Nut. We'll see you in the next episode.